Hello everyone, this is Arun. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at another video on BI Publisher and we're going to add a parameter to the data model that we have. So if you've been following my previous tutorials, we made the BI Publisher report, the first data model. We did charts and graphs and repeating groups in the layout. So today we're going to take a look at how we can add a parameter so the user can select a value and the data or the output is restricted by the value that is selected by the user. If you're new here, my name is Arun. I make videos on ERP Cloud, EPM, integrations, and analytics. If you like those topics, make sure to subscribe to the channel. All right, let's get started. So here's the sample report that I have. All right, here we have it. I know it, it shows the invoice number, date, the description, and the invoice amount. All right, let's go back and check, take a look at the data model. So I'm gonna go back to the catalog. Let's go to the data models folder, click on edit. Here we have the data set. So if I click on edit, you can see it picks data from AP invoices all. I've also added uh, the POZ suppliers underscore view uh, underscore V view. That's where we have the vendor name. So you can see the vendor name here. All right. Um, so this is the query that we have. So let me open up another tool that I've been using. It's called Cloud Miner. I've made a video early on, like probably two years ago. Uh, but I've been trying this out lately and I, you know, I'm gonna make another video uh, in, in the next couple of weeks. But this is the query that we have. And if I run this query, I'm gonna take this out for now. So if I run this query, you can see we get all the data based on this query from the database, right? Um, all right, so I added the vendor name here. And what I wanna do in this video is give the option, give the user an option to select the vendor name. And based on the, that selection, we're gonna restrict the data that is displayed in the report output, okay? So in this query, um, it, it gives you the event name, but it doesn't restrict the data based on any parameters. So to add a parameter to vendor name, what we have to do is add this statement here. So what I've done is I've taken the vendor name from the view, POZ suppliers underscore V view, and I've added a bind parameter or bind variable in there. So you do that by adding a colon and the name of the bind parameter. So once you do this, um, if you have used SQL developer or Toad, um, you can you know that it's gonna, when you execute that, execute the query, it's gonna ask you to provide a, a value for this bind parameter. So same thing happens here in Cloud Miner. So I can just select this, click on execute. It's gonna ask me for a value. Uh, so I have set the value to be JGA, click on apply. And it runs and displays me the data based on this vendor name. You can see the vendor name here, which is JGA, and you wouldn't see any other vendor names here. So just let me run it one more time. And I'm gonna change the value to Office Depot. All right, click on apply. Then this time it's gonna run and show me the data for Office Depot, supplier or vendor. All right, I'm gonna take this, copy and paste this. And so let's, let's copy and paste this and uh, change the data model. So I'm gonna do this. All right, so now I've added the data model, uh, changes to the data model. I added that additional condition Right. If I click on OK, the system is going to prompt you with this dialog box, which says, please select one or more bind variables to create corresponding parameters. So I've added that condition with the bind variable. Now it's asking, do you want me to create a bind variable in the system or, or you know, in the catalog or in the, in the data model? So if you want to you click on that bind variable name, check that, click on OK. What it does is it takes you to the parameters window that 
variable that parameter has been created here p vendor name it set the data type as string if you can provide a default value i'm going to mark this as mandatory and we'll talk about row placement and reorder later in another video for the display label i'm just going to change this to let's try supplier name. So this is supplier name. So if I just input something random, click on view, not gonna show me anything. So now let me change this to JGA, click on view. It's gonna give me the data. Let's change this to off. There you go. All right, so we know that the data model is working. It's restricting the data based on the value provided by the end user. I'm gonna click on save as sample data, then click on save, go back to the catalog, and let's go to the report, click on open. Now what's gonna happen is, um, you know, it's going to show you the option to select the or enter the supplier name. I'm just going to say JGA. Click on apply. And it, you know, runs and it shows me the report output. But I don't see the supply name here to even validate that this data is correct, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to change the layout because the last time when we created the layout, we didn't have the supplier name. So let's go ahead and add the supplier name into the report. So how do we do that? Click on the gear icon, click on edit report. Uh, I just want to make sure that how many layouts. So I have only one layout, so I can now click on edit. Now it takes me to the layout editor, and this is where you can change the um, layout. So here, I'm just going to add vendor name between the invoice number and invoice date and change the column header. All right, click on save, click on done. Now, if I run the report, should click on apply. And here you can see that all of the data that we have in this report is pertaining to that specific supplier. So I'm just gonna change this to Office Depot. Click on Apply. Now you're gonna see all of the data pertaining to that specific vendor. All right, so this is how you can add a parameter to the report and to the data model. So to uh, preview one more time, we added an additional condition with the bind variable uh, and you add the bind variable by specifying colon and the name of the variable. In this case, we added colon p underscore vendor underscore name. And uh, in the data model itself, once you do that, and once you make that change in the query and click on OK, the system is going to prompt you to create a parameter for that bind variable. In this case, we saw the parameter here, which is p underscore vendor name, but the display label, we went ahead and changed the display label to supplier name, made it mandatory, and we saved. Then we went ahead and changed the layout because the supplier name was not there in the layout, so we added that into the layout, and uh, everything worked out. All right. So in this video, I just wanted to show you how to add a new parameter to the data model. The next video, what we're gonna do is take a look at how to add a list of value to the parameter and how to add more than one parameter to the data model, all right? So we'll take a look at that in the next video. I'm gonna upload this data model and the report files into my Gumroad uh, account. Um, you can download it for free, but if you want to support my work, 
you could pay whatever amount you feel like is is good that's it for today if you have questions on this video uh, feel free to ask the questions in the comment section and uh, make sure to uh, like and share this video and also subscribe to the channel i will leave a link to everything that i've mentioned in the description of the video all right that's it for today i wish you all a great week ahead and make sure you're connected with me on linkedin and twitter ask any questions you have and uh, i will talk to you in the next one take care bye, -bye.